News Update. For InfoLife TV, this is David Omen. Despite the expulsion of 50 Darfur refugees back to Egypt, Prime Minister Ehud Olmert announced Sunday that Israel is willing to absorb 500 Sudanese refugees. The 50 expelled overnight Saturday were arrested Friday evening as they tried to cross from Egypt into Israel. Defense Minister Ehud Barak told the cabinet there are no signs that Syria is interested in starting a war with Israel and Israel has no information that Hezbollah is planning any unordinary action. He also told the ministers that the army was training and working to implement lessons learned from the second Lebanon war. After a week of negotiations between the Prime Minister's office and representatives of Holocaust survivors, the government today agreed to grant 8,500 Israeli Holocaust survivors who have not been receiving state assistance a monthly stipend of some 1,000 shekels. Israel opened the Nahal Oz crossing in central Gaza to allow fuel into the Hamas-controlled Gaza Strip today, but Palestinian officials said a European Union aid program, which funds fuel for the power plant, has not sent its monitors to the crossing to facilitate the shipment as required. An earthquake measuring three on the Richter scale was felt in the Jordan Rift Valley Sunday morning. The last earthquake felt in Israel was in February 2004, measuring 5.0 on the Richter scale, and tremors were felt throughout the country. Security products group Rav Bariach would open three new stores abroad in an investment worth $1.5 million, the Israeli company announced Sunday. The three new stores will be opened in Georgia, Cyprus and Ghana, bringing to 33 the number of stores it owns worldwide. The Agriculture Ministry is expected to approve a 10% increase in the price of eggs due to a steep rise in the cost of chicken feed. Secretary General of the Poultry Farmers Association, Yaakov Cohen, demanded that chicken farmers be paid more per egg. Today on InfoLife TV, Yoni Ben Menachem speaks of Hamastan in Gaza and Fatah land in the West Bank. Also on InfoLive, Jerusalem residents speak out on the plan to stop security units from guarding buses from the beginning of September. InfoLive.tv, live on your mobile phone. Do you want to keep ahead of the news and receive updates on what is happening in Israel? InfoLive.tv offers you a unique service, regular video news updates, free of charge, on your cell phone. To sign up, enter our website at www.infolive.tv and click on the mobile services banner. Today the whole world talks about Israel. But who broadcasts from Israel to the world in four languages? Live from Jerusalem, InfoLive TV, the first international Israeli television channel that operates 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Follow current events in Israel and the Middle East. Video features, interviews, news programs, and news briefs live as history unfolds. If you want a direct link to Israel, access InfoLive.tv.